Hey, and welcome back to another video. We're gonna keep going talking about Python collections today. And we're gonna to talk about the deck. And so without further ado, let's get started. We'll talk about what you're gonna to learn today and then dive right into coding. All right, so let's start talking about the collections deck here. And so what I've put here is that it really provides better management of double-ended queues. So we're gonna dive into this in just a moment. If that doesn't make any sense to you, don't be alarmed, don't be discouraged. You'll be a pro of this by the end of the tutorial. So in terms of what you're gonna to learn today, you're gonna to learn first what a deck is and how it's different from a regular list. You're also gonna learn when it's better to use a deck over a regular list and when it's better to use a regular list over a deck. And then finally, we're gonna talk about some of the very powerful methods and arguments that a deck provides in order to make queue management better and easier in Python. So. Let's start off by talking about what a deck is. I have this very formal definition here. It's a sequence-like data type that is like stacks and queues. They're designed to support memory efficient and fast appending and removing items from both ends of the data structure. So think of them as lists, but lists that serve a very particular purpose. So when I say here that, um, they are like queues, you can think of them as being physical queues, like waiting lines at a grocery store. People go into them, people leave them. So people join at the end of it, but people may also leave at the front of it or cut in line and join at the front. And so they work exactly like this. And so why is this important? Why can't we just add an item to a regular list in Python? And so let's look at what this actually looks like. All right, so we have this list here, one, two, three, four, five, and we wanna be able to add the value of zero to the far left of the list. So the easiest way in Python to do this is actually to use the insert method. So the insert method takes a value you wanna insert as well as the index position that you wanna insert it at. So in this case, we can see here now that we've been able to successfully add the value zero here. So why are we talking about, if, if this works, why, why do we need something else to manage this? And the, the reason for this is that it's very inefficient to do it this way. Really what we're doing here is because lists are ordered in a very particular way, is we need to reallocate the memory of all of the items in this list in order to be able to add something to the front of it. So with a list that has five items, it, you know, it's fine, it, it works, it, it doesn't use a lot of power. However, if we're talking about exceptionally large lists or just doing this over and over and over again, it does become very inefficient and we'll take a look at comparing it to the processes of DEX later on. So let's take a look at how a DEC works. So in order to actually be able to use this, we need to first import it. So we're gonna write from collections, import deck here. And go spell collections, right? So we're gonna create the exact same uh, values in this deck item. So we'll call it items and we'll pass in the items here. And we can just pass in really any iterable object here. So we're gonna, again, just use the values one through five just to keep things simple. So let's print out our items deck here. It's a deck object. We can confirm that actually by printing out the type of it here. We can see it's part of the collections module. It's a deck object. And so now let's take a look at how we can actually append items to the front of it. Now, I mentioned earlier that the Python lists have this append method. Deck objects also have this append method, but they also have an append left method. And it does exactly what you would expect it to do. It appends something at the left side of things. So if we wanted to now append the value zero as far left as we can, we can just call this method here. When we print it out, we can see it's inserted it just as the insert method did. But as you'll see later on, it did it in a much more memory efficient way. So now that we have this out of the way, let's take a look at some of the other methods that our deck method actually has. So has a similar append method. So if we wanted to append to the right of something, it does do that without a problem. It also has an extent method. Uh, so we can write items.extend. And here we pass in the value 789 as a list. 
and then we print it out and we can see that that worked no problem as well. We've already seen the append left method. However, it also has the extend left method. And so what this does is it allows us to pass in an iterable object like a list and extend it all the way on the left side. So let's see what this looks like. We're gonna pass in a list here. I'm just gonna call these 11, 22, and 33 so they stick out a little bit more. Now let's print it out. Now, what you'll notice here actually is that it didn't just append this list to the left of it. It actually went over each item and inserted it. So that's why the ordering here has actually been reversed. The reason for this is it first appended the value 11, then it appended the value 22, and then it appended the value 33. So that's something to keep in mind. It may cause some unexpected behavior. However, it's quite intuitive when you actually start thinking about it. One of the other great things that decks have that lists also have is the pop method. So the pop method uh, removes the last item and it actually returns it. So if we write this, we can see that it returned nine and it's actually removed it. So the value nine doesn't exist anymore here. However, we can also pop from the left and that works just as you would expect with a pop left method. And in this case, it's gonna return 33 and that value is no longer gonna be in our deck. Now, let's take a look at one of the very cool features that decks have. We can actually assign maximum lengths to our decks. And so the way that this works is that for, now imagine that what we're trying to do is keep track of the last visited websites that we looked at. What we have here is Google, we've asked Jeeves and we have weather.com. Um, we can store this in a deck and we can say, we only wanna store three values in this deck and to remove any items that get inserted afterwards um, or that push these items out of that queue. And so what we can do actually is create a new deck, we'll call it last visited. And if we're gonna pass in our websites and then use this max len argument here and pass in three. So now when we print this out, we can see, okay, we have this deck, it has all of the items. But now say we go to datag.io and we append this to the left because it's the new first item. Now, when we look at this, we can see it still only has three items. However, it's appended our newest visit here and it's removed weather.com from this. Now this is great when you really wanna maintain a certain length, when you wanna do different memory management optimizations, and it really just gives you so much more flexibility than a regular list would. It lets you handle this literally as a queue in terms of being able to maintain three items in that queue and pushing out other items there. Think about it from the perspective of being at the grocery store. After someone's checked out, they actually leave. They don't, they don't exist in that queue anymore, but you don't need to remove them if you've set this max len argument. All right, so for this next section, we're gonna look at accessing items because this can throw people off a little bit. And so because decks look a lot like lists, you may assume that we can just access items directly in them. So let's create a new one here. We'll call this values and we'll create a deck just so we have a few more items to work with here. And we'll include the values one through seven. Now, if we wanted to access the first item, we can access that index position just like we would on a list. So we get the value one. If we wanna access the last item, we can actually access the negative index as well. Now, where it gets a little bit different is that we can't actually access a range of values. So if we try to access, say, values two through four, or index positions two through four, it's gonna raise this type error. And so decks don't allow us to slice items. And this is because decks exist in order to handle that queue management. They don't really exist to store data in order to be able to access it from different parts of it. And in fact, they may actually be a little bit slower than lists in that regard. So let's actually explore this in the next section a little bit and talk about how decks are really different from lists. So 
the first thing that we can do is compare the speeds for how long it takes to add items to the left of a list or to a deck and be able to see how much efficiency do we really get out of this. And so for this, we're gonna use the time it magic. And so this of course only works in Jupyter Notebooks or Jupyter Lab like I'm in here. So we're gonna create we're gonna create this empty list first. So we're gonna call it a list and just create it empty here. And then we're gonna repeat this action uh, just 10,000 times here, just so <laughs> you don't get super bored watching this. And we're gonna pass in a list insert and we're gonna say we wanna insert it, the value zero at the zeroth index 10,000 times. All right, so we can see here it took 16.7 milliseconds per loop. So now let's do this with a deck and be able to see how long this actually takes. So, so we can see here that this is actually significantly faster. It's over 30 times faster to do this with a deck. Now, in this case, we only worked with a list of 10,000 items and we only ran through it once. It's not uncommon to have lists or much larger objects where this 16.7 milliseconds could turn into really significant run times. And so when you're appending items to either end of a list or a queue or an iterable object, using decks can be a very big time saver. Now, you may be thinking, okay, cool, I'll just use decks for absolutely everything. Now, this is where it gets quite interesting because decks aren't actually necessarily faster when we start thinking about accessing items in them. So Knowing this means that you really need to understand what you're hoping to accomplish with the different data structures that you're working with. So in this case, we saw that appending items to the left of a deck was significantly faster than adding items to the left of a list. However, that's not true for accessing items within a deck. Because decks are optimized for that particular operation of managing those ends of the queue, they're not actually optimized for accessing arbitrary items within the deck. And in that case, lists are actually faster. So let's take a look before we close out this tutorial of some other fun things that you can do with decks. So let's create this deck here and we'll just call it uh, more values. And we'll create this deck. We'll pass in the values of one through five again, uh, just to stay really creative. We can actually do what's called rotating them. And so when we look at this and we call the rotate method, what this is, is doing is it's actually rotating that deck. And so when we print this out now, we can see that it's pushed everything to the right one. So it's managed that start and end position very neatly here by pushing the last value to be the front and push, pushing everything else forward. And so we can actually build upon this by saying, if we don't just wanna push it one, we can say, push it two. And in that case, what's gonna happen is that everything's gonna be pushed two values over. Now, what if we wanted to push things in the opposite direction? We could actually pass in a negative value here. So I'm gonna pass in negative three, and that returns the original value just because of all the other transformations that we've done here. Now. There are other ways that we can work with decks. And one of the very common ways that you might see is being able to add them together. When we add decks together, we're really concatenating them. And so let's create deck one, which will be a deck with the values of one, two, and three. Then we'll create deck two, and that will be the values of four, five, and six. Now, when we add these two together, what happens is it returns a deck that's joined these two together. We can also multiply decks. So let's take a look at what happens when we try to multiply a deck by two. So we'll multiply deck two by two, and we can see that it's actually appended that deck to itself. Now we can also reverse a deck by using the reverse method. And so this works in the same way that you would expect. We're gonna take deck one and reverse it and we need to print it out. We can see that it's now returned the values three, two, one, rather than one, two, three. And finally, let's take a look at the count items method here, which as you would expect, 
gives you the ability to count items in that deck. So let's create another one called values. We'll pass in a list, just a random smattering of values here. And say we wanted to count how often the value one exists. We can do this like this and we can see it ex exists three times. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial to the end. If you learned something, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. If you have any questions about anything you learned today, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.